Hello, this is Yevhen Matyshenko with Open Forum, and we're here today at the NATO Representation Office in Kyiv uh, for an interview with Ms. Aneta Kleiner, Director of the NATO Information and Documentation Center in Ukraine. Hello, Ms. Kleiner. Thank you for doing this interview with us. It's my pleasure. Uh, first of all, um, the question is, and the issue rather sensitive for Ukraine uh, regarding the prospects of receiving a membership action plan to eventually join NATO. The Allies emphasize the priority of implementing uh, reforms, right? At the same time, Ukraine's senior officials, while reaffirming the need for such reforms, note that the issue is in fact largely political, pointing out that there are allies that simply don't want to see our country a member of the alliance. In your opinion, what is uh, really decisive in this sense? The implementation of reforms, or maybe it's NATO's political will to grant our country the long sought MAP? Well, uh, let's first of all start with the membership action plan to explain what is the MAP or membership action plan. It's a document uh, which um, is granted, which is tailored and uh, granted for those aspirant countries who have expressed a wish to join the alliance, NATO. And uh, it's a comprehensive document or mechanism or tool uh, that implies various aspects, well, security, defense, uh, economic, uh, political, uh, resource and legal aspects. Mm -hmm. And it's tailored for each member state and it's a document that helps um, a country to uh, move ahead with reforms and get prepared for um, for possible um, and eventual uh, membership. On the other hand, I want to underline that uh, the map uh, uh, doesn't uh, necessarily mean, you know, eventual uh, membership or, or, or joining the alliance. But it's a practical tool and it's uh, a document that implies uh, advice, assistance and practical support for aspiring countries. And for example, uh, when, uh, when uh, the Baltic countries wanted to join um, the alliance, uh, they also had uh, the membership action plan and for example uh, if we look at um, at two uh, countries that lately joined the alliance it's uh, montenegro and uh, the north macedonia for example uh, north macedonia was um, was was granted uh, the map in 1999 and um, North Macedonia joined uh, uh, last year, joined the alliance. So it's a process. And it's, uh, it's one thing, so uh, and it's, you know, when the map is granted and then a, uh, a country goes through the reform process. And on the other hand, it's also uh, then NATO allies, and, and then in this case, you know, 30 allied countries, they also, they, uh, they assess and also they, um, they look, you know, at the implementation process. And uh, then, uh, then also, it's a decision taken by 30 uh, countries, you know, when a particular country is ready to join uh, the alliance. Uh, when we speak about Ukraine, uh, it was also underlined uh, in June during uh, NATO summit uh, in Brussels that uh, it was underlined how much uh, Ukraine values for EU Atlantic security. And uh, here, uh, NATO representation in Ukraine helps a lot uh, uh, for Ukraine uh, to implement to the whole, you know, uh, reform package uh, Ukraine has committed to. And our advisors on a daily basis consult and advise. And um, this is, it's, it's a, you know, it's, it's a joint effort to both from, it's, it's Ukraine's, you know, aspirations and also uh, NATO's support what we provide for Ukraine. So NATO's political will is out there, so we have to work a little bit more. That's what you're it's, saying. It's, it's, it's both sides. So it's, mm -hmm. you know, it's uh, Ukraine's uh, reform process. And then uh, when, uh, when the allies decide, you know, that a country or Ukraine is ready to join uh, the alliance, you know, it's a decision uh, which is taken on a consensus base. Right. Uh, now, what steps do you see as a communications expert that Ukraine needs to take to improve its image in the eyes of the international community, NATO allies and partners as a country uh, whose Euro-Atlantic aspirations are irreversible? 
uh, we just spoke about uh, reforms mm -hmm. and uh, and it's interesting that um, a country's image is uh, usually perceived uh, from uh, various aspects and like three main aspects is um, its uh, country's um, environment, uh, its uh, governance and economy. And when we speak about country's um, environments then we speak about uh, people's hospitality or nature and then food and all these cultural aspects. When we speak about governance, it's about uh, uh, how, um, what is also country, so how reliable is a country when it comes to its contribution to the international community. And uh, when we speak, and it's also, we count, in, uh, we count also in, uh, for example, uh, how efficient is the judiciary system, you know, mm -hmm. how f also uh, how fair is uh, the court system. And it's all about reforms. So uh, its uh, its image uh, definitely is based on uh, what uh, what you know what is the political structure. So uh, how economy operates, uh, how how is ensure you know uh, freedom of speech. All these aspects are very important uh, when it comes to a country's image. And in Ukraine's case. Uh, and like in any other country's case, it's uh, to uh, to show you know with practical you know uh, examples and then the practical things that uh, rule of law is ensured. Uh, that, uh, for example, in, in Ukraine's case, that anti-corruption um, institutions operate effectively. That reforms uh, Ukraine is committed to are being implemented, and uh, that uh, that uh, raises country's image. Another thing it's also about uh, economy. So uh, whether you know, um, whether there's also in a country uh, like a workforce, you know, is um, you know educated and skilled, and how, for example, a foreign company can operate, uh, you know, in a country. So what are the conditions? So how favorable conditions? I think uh, it's uh, very important is to to show these uh, these good examples and the steps forward. And I um, also know that uh, Ukraine uh, has, um, has a public diplomacy uh, strategy. And it's about building narratives, but then narratives should be based on, 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 on deeds and, and, and practical steps. I understand. Uh, and how do you think uh, Ukraine could enhance its work on developing and then implementing its annual national programs under the auspices of the Ukraine Ad Hoc Commission? Uh, yes, when we look at uh, Ukraine's annual national program, we, uh, we uh, can note uh, and we have noticed and really I would like also to uh, commend Ukraine on uh, big progress and indeed, you know, big steps done uh, in last uh, years because uh, the annual national program or ANP uh, has become uh, more substantial, more result oriented and more measurable. So, and for example, just um, two weeks ago, uh, a NATO uh, annual national programs assessment team visited the country, and we had several meetings with uh, with um, members of Verkhovna Rada, with uh, civil society representatives, and we met and we discussed, and also uh, we, we we received uh, Ukraine's feedback and assessment, you know, self assessment on the implementation. So. I think it's it's uh, it's um, an important instrument, uh, the, the most important instrument um, uh, at U Ukraine's disposal uh, to see and to measure how the whole you know reform process is being um, conducted. So, and it, it's not only about defense and security sector; it's about um, economy, it's about political aspects, it's about. Uh, you know the judiciary system, so it's about the security sector. So, I think it's uh, we have noted the progress. So, and uh, we also we we have you know supported and helped you know Ukraine with uh, with implementing the NP you know for several years. It's already for 12 years, and uh, it goes ahead. So, and really, so there is a good, very good progress. Great. Do you think that that self-assessment was fair this year? 
Yeah, sure, because you know it's uh, it's it's done also. On, it's done by uh, several actors, so it's done by government. So, and we had very open and frank and fair discussions, and and then and, and, you know the, the the feedback what we got, and then also we got feedback from civil society organizations. So. It's it's um, it's a, you know we had these discussions so and I was also part of them so and um, it was you know during the discussions we also could see you know and you know, notice things you know uh, that you know where uh, Ukraine has progress you know uh, which things you know should be brought forward so and uh, what should still uh, need to be done. Okay, thanks. Now Russian propaganda, huge topic. Yeah. Uh, Russian propagandists are becoming increasingly aggressive, including in achieving their goal of preventing our country from joining the alliance. How significant a role do you think the influences of the Russia factor on Ukraine's path toward its Euro-Atlantic integration? Well, uh, again, uh, when we sp speak about uh, disinformation and uh, malign information attacks and propaganda, uh, um, it's a phenomena uh, all countries, you know, uh, are exposed to and face. And, uh, and that's why, you know, uh, one of the things uh, which each society should uh, follow, I think, is, you know, that the whole society is uh, aware uh, of, um, of the fact that each of us is exposed and every day, you know, to uh, disinformation, to misinformation, to fake news, and uh, it's very important uh, that it's, you know, um, cross-government um, also uh, effort, and it's very important that that uh, and each each of each element or, or each segment of society plays important role. Uh, let's be, you know, academia, uh, civil society, uh, government, and um, it's um, the media, and mm -hmm. it's everyone has a role to play. And uh, it's also important that uh, each of us uh, use, you know, critical approach to the news we receive, that we uh, uh, rely on, uh, on source of information which are reliable, that we check, you know, information channels we use and information source we use. And, uh, for example, it's, um, it's not only uh, Ukraine's case, so also, for example, uh, the alliance um, has been also exposed to uh, disinformation attacks from the very beginning uh, of uh, the creation of uh, NATO. And uh, it's, uh, it, these are lessons learned uh, which we go through. And in Ukraine's case, I can name at least, you know, up to 10, uh, indeed, you know, uh, respectable fact-checking uh, institutions, organizations. And Ukraine's experience is something that you can share with allies and you can share with, um, with, with other partners because uh, you are exposed, you know, on an everyday base. So, and that's why it's very important that we all are critical. And that's why, for example, within Within NATO Ukraine countering hybrid warfare platform, uh, we also um, help with uh, running a media literacy course uh, for civil servants, for Ukraine civil servants, for uh, media representatives, and um, uh, this is, you know, one of uh, one of the uh, things, you know, or one of the uh, platforms we work closely with uh, Ukraine. And also in NATO's case, it's important um, that we share information we receive and we work close also with the U European Union, with G7, with the United Nations. So, because it's, um, everyone is exposed, it's, it's, it's common threat, so, and we need to unite our efforts. Uh, well, uh, in follow-up to this question, what do you think is key to strengthening, further strengthening Ukraine's resilience to those disinformation campaigns, manipulation campaigns by Russia, including, uh, especially in the context of the ongoing pandemic and what we're seeing now, uh, those anti-vaccinations rallies, and we see common signs of them uh, in Kiev and in, in, in Moldova as well. Maybe you have some advice for us in this regard. Yeah, uh, I think uh, 
as a pandemic, uh, COVID pandemic also, you know, brought uh, brought uh, to the spotlight uh, the phenomena of uh, disinformation and malign information attacks, because each country um, uh, experienced uh, uh, that during the pandemic, uh, this um, disinformation or fake, you know, um, not unverified uh, news have you know, just you know have you know jumped up and 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 and, and spike uh, that's why it's um, what nato does uh, we don't reply to uh, disinformation with disinformation mm -hmm. we use uh, facts we use the information which is reliable and fact based and uh, we uh, we put on the table uh, you know arguments and facts and, uh, and it's also the advice I could give uh, to Ukraine. So uh, it's very important that uh, uh, that uh, we offer, you know, information that is uh, fact-based. So and um, and uh, that is uh, that is how we can how we can handle uh, this. And it's also important that we uh, do uh, information environment, uh, you know. Uh, we mon monitor information environment, mm -hmm. and also that we uh, that based on that uh, we engage. So it's just you know we uh, we uh, we monitor and then we engage because, for example, a NATO's uh, communications uh, uh, communications is also based on uh, the assessment of the information uh, environment. And then we those inputs we also embed in our communications efforts. I see. Uh, let's recall after NATO expelled, I believe, eight Russian officials from its Brussels headquarters, saying they are believed to have been in fact Russian intelligence officers undercover, Russia went for an asymmetrical response. They suspended the work of its representation and uh, ordered the closure of NATO's office in Moscow. Does NATO see this uh, demarche as part of a growing threat to the global security situation and that in the, European, in the European region in particular? And what help can we count on from allies and partners if, if Russian aggression against Ukraine intensifies, especially uh, amid the recent reports of the uh, Russian troops buildup along Ukrainian borders and uh, the ongoing spat in, uh, in Belarus as well? Um, a relationship between the alliance and Russia um, at the moment is at the lowest point uh, since the end of the Cold War, and uh, we also we are aware of the fact that uh, you, uh, Russia suspended its uh, mission at uh, NATO, and we are also aware of the fact that uh, Russia suspended. Uh, NATO military liaison office in uh, in Moscow, and also the uh, NATO information office in uh, Moscow was uh, closed. So, uh, nevertheless, uh, NATO Secretary General uh, repeatedly has, um, you know, invited uh, when meeting uh, Russia's Foreign Minister Sergey Lavrov, has repeated that. Uh, Dialogue must be kept, must be open, must be uh, maintained, and especially in times of um, high tensions. So, and also, um, NATO has several times um, also invited Russia uh, to uh, to hold meetings within uh, NATO Russia Council. Um, very important is that, uh, uh, of course, a NATO keeps, you know, this dual track approach. It's mm -hmm. uh, defense and deterrence on one side and uh, open doors for dialogue on the other side, because uh, dialogue must be kept and must be maintained. And uh, Russia is our neighbor and constructive dialogue is always, you know, uh, one of the things you know is that how we can uh, solve uh, disputes and and then 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 also uh, decide on the way to go ahead. Uh, on the other hand, um, when we uh, when we uh, witnessed uh, uh, 
build-up of uh, Russia's troops in and around Ukraine a couple of months ago, um, NATO allies were explicit and immediately reacted and responded. And also during uh, NATO summit in, uh, in, in Brussels in June, it was uh, clearly stated that uh, NATO stands by Ukraine and we have stepped up our both political and uh, practical uh, support. And we also, uh, we also have stepped up uh, our, um, our you know, visits, seaport visits, and also uh, exercises as well as a meeting. So this is, you know, NATO, NATO stands by Ukraine and uh, we are uh, supporting Ukraine's, you know, territorial integrity and uh, NATO allies will never recognize uh, Crimea's illegal and illegitimate uh, annexation. Well, Ukraine society does praise NATO support, that's for sure. Well, thank you, Ms. Kleine, for sitting, us, uh, for sitting down with us today. Uh, thanks for watching and uh, join us for more interviews with some amazing speakers.